This is Cerebral Cinema. Movies of the Mind. Cerebral Cinema and the WON Radio Network present to you Superwoman. Yes, Superwoman, the dynamic crime fighter. Superwoman, the champion of justice. Superwoman, who in truth is mild-mannered Chicago news reporter Emily Nesbacher. Time now for Rocky Jordan. Not far from the Mosque Sultan Hassan in Cairo stands the Café Tambourine, run by Rocky Jordan. The Café Tambourine, crowded with forgotten men, alive with the battle of many languages. For this is Cairo, where modern adventure and intrigue unfold against a backdrop of antiquity. Tonight's story, The Race. I was sitting in my office at the tambourine, trying to beat the terrific afternoon heat. Like everyone else in the cafe, I was too shot to even raise a finger. Then in came this girl. She startled me a little because she darted in under the tables in high gear like she was searching for someone. When she began yakking at Chris, my bartender, my curiosity got the best of me. Someone jumping up and down in this heat deserved attention. As I walked over, I noticed she was nice-looking in a quiet sort of way. In spite of the fact, she looked as if any moment she might spring right through the ceiling. But he has been here, hasn't he? I haven't seen him all day. Uh, what's up, Chris? Oh, Rocky. This... I've got to find Abdullah, Ben Abdullah. They said he was up here at the tambourine. You know, Ben Abdullah. He owns that little pawn shop up on the corner. Yeah, sure, I know. It's very important. There isn't time to explain. Just tell me where I can find him, please. Every second counts. Well, I haven't seen him all day. I tried to tell her, Do you but... know where he is, then? Hmm, could be one of a thousand places. Why don't you try the pawn He's shop? He's got a or... sign hanging on the door, out to lunch. A water vendor at the corner said he'd be up here. It's desperate. Don't you see? No, I don't. If I don't get into that store in the next few minutes, there isn't going to be anything left of this whole block. Maybe the heat's got her, Rocky. It's too late to look for it. If I could just get into this hey, shop. Hey, 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 take it easy, lady. <laughs> well, that won't get a thing accomplished. Now, come on, tell me what it's all about. Well, I, I, I'm afraid it's even too late now to break into this shop. I wouldn't even know where to look for it. Look for what? A high-powered explosive. A what? A bomb. It's in the pawn shop. A bomb? She's nuts. Uh, maybe you'd better start from the beginning. There, there's not time to explain. It will be going off in a few minutes. What we'd better do is clear the entire area before everyone is killed. Sunstroke, if you ask me. Hey, Chris, I don't know whether she's loony or... Don't stand there! Tell everyone to clear the streets! They'll listen to you, not me! Look, lady, I don't like to have my leg pulled. Every second counts. Now, please, believe me. Anyone within a uh, hundred yards of the pawn shop is in danger. Okay, okay. Chris, we better play it safe. Call the fire department, the police, and what have you. There's a bomb going off. I think. <laughs> well, maybe Chris was right. Maybe the dame had got too much sun and blown her top. But who could take chances on a bomb going off? I dashed down the street like a poor man's Mel Patton. And in what must have been the world's record, the block was completely empty. The girl attacked right along with me. And once the block was cleared, we made a run for the safety zone where the crowd had formed, a hundred yards away. When we were about 60 yards from it, the girl began to tug her arm and scream wildly at me. Don't! Don't! It's safe to run any further! Don't! I'd fallen flat on my face and curled up like a clam. Outside of my eardrums almost breaking and a torn pair of pants, I was in pretty fair shape. After the thunder stopped, I looked back down the street. There was a black hole that was once Ben Abdullah's pawn shop. None of the shops on the block got off easy. As for the tambourine, there wasn't a window left in it. I turned to congratulate the girl on her king-sized bomb, but she was nowhere in sight. 
It was the sweetest job of vanishing into thin air I'd seen in some time. I started to get to my feet when I noticed that the way the girl had been lying was a crumpled pawn ticket. As I picked it up, a pair of familiar feet stopped in front of me. I looked up in the face of Captain Sam Sabaya of the Cairo Police Force and his erstwhile shadow, Greco. Hi, Sam. Your bartender called us. Uh, give me a hand up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Well, Sam, just goes to show you. Never underrate a woman. Your bartender explained the entire proceedings. Where is she? Looks like she took a powder. You mean... I do. If I may say so, my captain, it sounds too rehearsed. Uh, good old Greco. I hate to disappoint you, but I never saw the girl before in my life. Jordan, did she give you any hint as to what was behind the explosion? Nothing. Oh, uh, this pawn ticket might help. I'm sure it was hers. She must have dropped it when she fell to the ground. I will take it. Thank you, Jordan. Should have her name and address on it. It has a name and address, all right. Only it's a man's name. Rolo Bendata. Hmm. Well, that's one on me. Rocky, you want it on the telephone. Oh, all right, Chris. I'll be right there. I want to ask you some more questions, Rocky. Uh, check with me in the tambourine, Sam. You won't have any trouble finding it. It's the only bell in the block in one piece. I hurried back to my office and picked up the phone. From the other end of the wire came the voice of my late friend, the young lady who specially seemed to be high-powered explosives. Mr. Jordan, I'm sorry I had to run out on you. Well, so am I. You must understand, I couldn't face the police. Uh, where are you now? I won't waste words. I'm in terrible trouble. I need your help. I'll pay anything for it. Well, you can pay for the broken windows and the tambourine. Anything. Will you help me? I'm afraid tossing bombs is a little out of my line. Believe me, I'm not asking for myself. You know, I could back that line with hearts and flowers. Mr. Jordan, if I weren't on the level, would I have warned you about the explosive in the pawn shop? Eh, all right. You tell me, and I'll listen. I can't over the telephone. I'll give you an address where you can meet me. Okay. But look, lady, I'm leaving word with my bartender where I'm going, just in case you got more bombs up your sleeve. She gave me an address that was on the edge of Cairo. As I hung up, I saw Sabaya and Greco coming in the front door, so I took off the back way. I took a taxi, and we drove for an hour. The address turned out to be a small house set one mile out on the desert. I paid off the hack, went up and knocked on the door. Are you alone? Yeah. Now, you couldn't have picked a closer place. I'm sorry, but I live here. Come in. Huh? Right. Oh, looks more like a laboratory to me. It is. I'm an explosives chemist. I live in the back. Hmm, dangerous address. I I'd better introduce myself. I'm, I'm Suzanne Duran. Won't you sit down? Uh, no, thanks. Not on a keg of dynamite. And stop jumping up and down. I, I can't help it. We only have 11 hours left. Hey, look, I've had enough riddles for one day. What's this all about? I I'll, I'll start from the beginning. But it would help. A, a man by the name of Negri Seer hired me to develop a time bomb that would have a 24-hour action delay. Why? He needs a... He heads a combine that wants to blast for water in the desert. Why? You can imagine what it would mean if you could bring an incessant water supply to Cairo. Well, sure, but... Uh, why not a regular time bomb or dynamite? He wanted an explosive that would need no wiring so that his company wouldn't attract attention. Why all the secrecy? Why, it's like digging for gold. He thinks he's found a spot where there might be water, and he doesn't want anyone to know till he staked his claim. Well, I think he's crazy. Uh, where does the pawn shop come in? I made two bombs, which I was going to test today. I was afraid my servant might accidentally spoil them, so I hid them in the base of an old clock. I went shopping, and when I came back, the clock was gone. Mm -hmm. His servant must have needed money, so he stole the clock, never realizing the bombs were in there and pawned it. Is your servant's name uh, Rollo Bendata? Yes. How how did you know? You left his pawn ticket on the street. It looks to me like Rollo's in trouble, not you. Only one of the bombs went off in the pawn shop. Oh, don't you see? The other one will go off. You mean we're going to have to go through that all again? The bombs were set to go off at different times. Well, but the blast of one could have exploded the second one. Yes, but you only heard one explosion, didn't you? Uh, only one exploded, Mr. Jordan. I could tell by the force. Well, maybe Rollo's got the other bomb. I've already talked to him. He swears he knows nothing about them. Oh, fine. I 
I don't know where to look for it, and according to my calculations, the bomb should go off in 10 hours and 46 minutes. Well, uh, what's this bomb look like? A small object made of lead with a screw arrangement. When it's screwed down, the process begins. Two liquids, one eats through the separation, oh, and... Oh, I get it. Hundreds of people will be killed. Look, I... if you want me to help, you got to promise me one thing. Name it. Stop jumping up and down. Uh, oh, I, I, I promise... Uh, this, uh, this guy, Negri Seer, you mentioned. Uh, you know where he lives? Yes. Come on, let's pay him a visit. I'll call a taxi. You're bouncing up and down again. I- I'm sorry. Now relax, will you? You've still got ten hours and 46 minutes. Ten hours and 44 minutes. We taxied across town to Negri Seer's apartment house. Negri let us in. He was the oddest little guy I'd ever laid eyes on. Short, skinny, but he had a huge head that should have gone with the body of a giant. <laughs> he looked so top-heavy, I had to control myself from wanting to hold him up so he wouldn't topple over. His apartment was cluttered with bric-a-brac and large packing cases. The latter, I gathered, must have had something to do with his water project. When Suzanne told him about the bomb, he got quite irked, to say the least. Really, my dear, I don't know what you expect me to do if you've lost one of your ghastly bombs. Well, coming here was my idea. And just who are you, Jordan? Suzanne, who is this man? He's trying to help me. You didn't tell him, I hope. I, I'm afraid I had to. You were sworn to secrecy. How could you? Well, Jordan, you'll never find out where I hope to get water. I'm not interested in your plan for digging water. I'm only trying to locate the bomb. Oh, this is dreadful. It will be all over Cairo. Everyone will be digging for water. No one outside of this room will know. Besides, you're the only one who knows the locale where the water might be. Huh? So you're going to blackmail me, huh? Or maybe you're going to torture me till I tell you the exact spot. Look, for the last time... What will my partners think? I will tell you nothing. Rocky, we can't afford to waste all this time. Look, Negri, if you'll just answer a few questions. Never. Were you out at Suzanne's place this afternoon? I... Yes, but she wasn't home, so I left. I, I was probably tracking down Rollo. What time were you out there? Our appointment was for two. I'm always on time. Did you see anyone or notice anything that might help us? No, no, no. Is that clear? Very. There are only eight hours left, Rocky. What are we going to do? All right, hang on to yourself. Suzanne, I want you to take this man out of here right away, or I'll call the police. We're going. So help me, I warn you. You'll never find out where I'm going to get water. Never. What I'm wondering is if we'll ever find out where to find that other bomb. Ever. You are listening to The Race, tonight's adventure with Rocky Jordan. May we suggest that you vary your CBS listening. Education is one of the most important phases of life today. Starting Monday, tomorrow night, Harvard University's President James Bryant Conant will discuss America's free public school system in a series of five talks each evening next week. As a thinking citizen, you'll find this series informative and important. So find out when the CBS program, You and Education, will be heard over your local CBS station and tune in. We think it will be well worth your while. Now we take you back to Cairo and tonight's adventure with Rocky Jordan, The Race. It all began when a dame chemist named Suzanne Duran mixed up a couple of bombs for a character called Negri Seer, who had himself a great scheme. He was going to blast for water in the Sahara and make Egypt a garden spot. That sounded sort of screwy, but the noise of one of those bombs exploding sounded anything but. Well, that took care of one, but there was still another bomb someplace in the Near East, and Suzanne figured it would go off in eight hours. Where was it? Well, you tell me. Negri Seer couldn't. We asked him. Well, when we came out on the street, Suzanne was hopping up and down again and on the verge of tears. And uh, she looked at me as though I could supply all the answers. Mr. Jordan, there must be something we can do. Uh, do you know where the office of the Cairo Mail is? Yes. Good. Now listen. And stop jiggling. We have a plan, then? Maybe. We're going to have to split up to save time. All right. 
But get out of the newspaper office and ask for Ed Stack. He's a friend of mine. Give him a description of the bomb. What else? That's all. You'll get out an extra and see that it's broadcast, too. That way, everyone will be warned and on the lookout. Oh, that's wonderful. And when you finish there, go to the tambourine and wait for me. Where are you going? Where can I find Rollo? Native Porters, number six, Okar Street. Uh, check. Rocky, I, Look, I don't... Look, will you stop worrying? It's going to be okay. Take my word for it. Yeah, it was going to be okay, sure. Only I wish I could have believed it. I was stymied from ear to ear. I put Suzanne in a taxi, and she was whisked off toward the newspaper office. I wanted to cross the street to get a taxi myself when up roared Sam Sabaya, taking the corner on two wheels. Jordan! Well, this is a coincidence, Sam. I traced you through this taxi company. Where's the girl? On her way to the newspaper office. Rocky, I'm losing my patience. You said you did not know the girl. When I finally traced her, I learned she has been with you. Sam, hang on to your brass badge. Got something to tell you. Well, Jordan, I'm waiting. She's working for a character named Negri Seer. Negri Seer? Hmm? Yes, I've heard something of him. He's a dealer in fine art, a collector and such. Fine art, eh? Well, he's got a sideline. What do you mean? The girl's a chemist. He hired her to make a couple of tickless bombs to blast for water in the Sahara. But, Jordan, are you serious? So help me, Sam. That's a story I got. Blast for water in the Sahara? Shh. It's a secret. Jordan, this is not an amusing matter. Water in this part of the world is nothing to laugh at. There are those in these desert lands who make of it a, a religion. Yet is it possible to blast for water in the Sahara? Negri Seer thinks so. Or so he says. What could be done to all this arid land? Jordan, is this a trick? Well, your guess is as good as mine. But I am inclined to think it is. Well, the bomb was real enough. Yes, yes, of course. We must make every effort to locate the other... But still... Yes, eh? Jordan, if that girl is not at the newspaper office, as you say, I'm going to hold you responsible for aiding her escape. Sam took off, and I checked the time and shuddered. Then I headed for the home of Rollo Bendata, Suzanne's servant, for my talk with him. I knocked hopefully on his door. No one answered, so I tried the door. It was open. The room was kind of dark. I took a few steps and stumbled. I didn't have to look twice to know I'd stumbled over a body, and the body was real dead. That's when a door slammed behind me. I wheeled around and right into a native holding a gun. Your hands in the air, Fan. Hey, what is this? You kill my brother Rollo, yes? Rollo? Why you kill him? You're making a mistake, buddy. No, no, you kill him, you despise it, Westerner. I told Rollo to keep away from Stop you. Stop waving that gun around. First working for the despise it offending with a big head. Now this, I kill you to avenge his death. I told him as he fired, the shots went wild. He rolled around for a while, fighting for the gun. And I pulled away and caught him with a hard right. He dropped to the floor. Well... There was no sense in hanging around with one of my hosts in the refrigerator and the other in the deep freeze. So Rollo was really working for Negri Seer. I raced up the street till I came to a public telephone and called the tambourine. I wanted to tell Suzanne what I found out about her servant. Tambourine. Uh, Chris, this is Rocky. Boy, I'm glad you called. Sabaya just left. Oh, what's up? He missed the girl again, and he thinks you gave him the business. Well, that's why I'm calling. Where is she? She was only here a minute, then left with some guy. Who? I don't know. He was a little guy with the biggest head. Negri Seer. What's going on, Rock? Uh, it beats me. But there's a noise that's going to rock Cairo in a couple of hours, and I got a feeling Sabaya's going to be looking at me. Well, there were a lot of lies in it someplace. I raced for Negri's apartment, but the place was deserted. Negri was gone. Suzanne wasn't there, but neither were the packing cases that belonged to Negri Seer. That took me to the railroad station double time. I pushed through the crowd till I came to the gates for departing trains. Waiting in one of the lines was Negri Seer. Jordan, what are you doing here? Looking for you. You better step out of line. Do not be too hasty, Jordan. Come on, out of the line before I drag you. Uh, 
Dear fellow, let us talk this over where no one may overhear us. All right. All right. Over into this corner. There. Now. You listen. I... I'm going to do the talking. But, my dear fellow, I. Where's Suzanne? You... But how should I know? I... Oh, I know. You are still trying to trick me into revealing secrets. Close that it. Will in... Rollo Bendata, Suzanne's servant, was working for you. That means he took those bombs from Suzanne's place purposely, on your orders. That means also he knocked one bomb, the one on the clock, at that pawn shop on your orders, too. Lies! Lies! Deceitful! All right. One bomb hocked, one bomb still on the loose. All on purpose, too, Negri. You figured if one went off, Suzanne would think both of them went off. Meanwhile, you'd have one to toy with. Go ahead, persecute me. Persecute me if you wish. Ah, oh, come off it. Yep. So what if I say you are right? What then? So the bomb's going to explode in an hour and a half. I'll make you a head ring until you tell me where it is. <laughs> that would never succeed. I will never tell you. I will never tell you where the bomb is or why I have placed it there. That water blasting's a phony deal. Indeed. I bet your packing cases will give me some answer. I am the only one who knows the whereabouts of the bomb, and I will not tell. I will not tell unless... Huh? What's the deal? Allow me to leave Cairo. Allow me to leave Cairo, and I shall reveal the... So Either one of them. Well, Greco. Jordan, you have trapped me. You have deliberately led the police to me. Come, the both of you, to police headquarters. Uh, put away that gun, Greco. You're attracting attention. Come, I say. No. You will not capture me. You will not take me and beat. Don't shoot, Greco. Don't shoot him. He's the only one. No! Oh, come on, oh. I told you, you will not take me and Hey, you did it up right, Greco. He's dead. I had no choice. He reached for a gun. Everybody, stand back. Ah, uh, you'll probably get a promotion for this. It was me or he. I had no choice. Attention, everyone. Stand back. Now, Jordan. 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 Where are you? I dove into the crowd and got lost. Well, I was free of Greco, but I was right back where I started. I checked the time again. In an hour and ten minutes, that bomb would go off, and the only man who knew where it was was dead. Well, I mulled the whole thing over for a while. All that was left were those packing cases of Negri's. It took me ten minutes to find them. They were being loaded into a baggage car at the end of the line. I hurried up to one of the native quarters and tried to con him. Oh, look, I uh, want to check my baggage to see if I forgot anything. Yes, if indeed. Which are yours? Yeah, uh, those packing cases over there. Yes, Effendi. Your luggage checks? Uh, luggage checks? I cannot let you look into the cases without them. <laughs> I, uh, I left them with my wife. Oh, sorry, Effendi, but I cannot do it. It is against the regulations, and I cannot... <laughs> I didn't want to hit him, but who had time to argue or explain? I began ripping into the packing cases marked fragile. The first case had some figures carved in marble and some pictures, but they didn't ring any bells. It wasn't until I got inside the second case that I saw the light. It contained a green jade vase that I knew I'd seen before. And right then and there, Negri's whole deal became clear. I knew where the bomb was and why. I scrambled out to the street. When I looked at my watch, I broke out in a cold sweat. It was less than an hour. Fifty minutes, to be exact. I dashed up to a taxi and shook the sleeping driver. Wake up, will you? Come on. Palace of Fine Arts. Come on, let's go. Look, money. Maybe this will wake you up. The night is so hot, Effendi, for such energy. This dough, all of it's yours, you understand? you got to step on it. I will try. Well, The Palace of Fine Arts. It is closed at this hour. I know it's closed. Let me worry about that. Yes, Effendi. Get in. It is too hot to worry. Can't you go any faster than this? In this weather, the motor gets hot. <sighs> well, excuse me. I didn't mean to keep you awake. Between yawns, we lumbered along, and it was 20 minutes later before we pulled up in front of the Palace of Fine Arts. 
I threw the money at the driver, raced up the tier of steps that led to the entrance. The joint was dark, but I saw a woman waiting in the shadows of the doorway. Suzanne. Hawkey, is that you? Yes. I was beginning to get worried. Negri said you had located the bomb and instructed me to meet you here. Well, double talk. Now, don't start jumping. The bomb is in this building. But Negri said that... Never mind, Negri. I'll explain later. We've only got a few minutes. This building covers a square block. Yeah, there must be a guard around. Inside. Uh, look, start screaming. I'll bang on the door. Help! Open the door! Help me! Help! All right, that's enough. Here he comes. I said that's enough! Stop it! Sorry, I had to hit you. It's all right, my my nerves. I I, I couldn't stop. Oh, here's the guard. Oh, open up. We got to get inside. There's a bomb in there. Go away. We are closed. Open up. There's a bomb in there. It is after hours. Can you not read? He can't hear you. I stand back. I'm going to smash the glass with my foot. Yeah. He's got a gun. You you are under arrest. For the last time, there's a bomb in here. Uh, What are you saying? Someone has planted a bomb here. It's going to go off in about 11 minutes. You, You mean the bomb they have been... Talking about over the radio? Yes. Oh. Come in. Now that we're in, Rocky, what are we going to do? Come on. Follow me. Look out. There's a million places to look. All right, here. Uh, Here's a jade room. Come on. There, over there, that green jade vase. It's the same as the one Negri had in the packing case. Yeah, wait a minute. I'll fish down into it. There. Uh. Well, here's your bomb. That's it! All right, do something to it, Suzanne. Loosen the screw, then pour off the top liquid. Uh-huh. It, it won't go off now. Oh, where's the, where's the guard? Back, back there. He, he fainted. I, I guess he, he couldn't. Take. Suzanne, this is no time to leave me standing here alone. Well, that was about it. Negri had himself a fine little deal. The water blasting, of course, was phony. That was just his way of getting Suzanne to make a couple of bombs, tickless ones. The first explosion was to make it seem as though both bombs went off. But the live one that Negri kept, he planted in the Palace of Fine Arts to cut up his robbery. Negri was to walk off with a lot of priceless odd objects, leave some phonies in its stead, then blow up part of the building so that no one would ever know the real art object had been taken. And the tickless bomb was necessary so that it wouldn't attract attention, sitting there real quietly in the green jade vase. Yeah, art can be a pretty interesting subject, I guess. I'll never forget the life class I once took when I was a kid. Funny thing about it, though, it was a pretty fascinating class, but somehow I can't remember that I ever had any time in it for painting. It's CBS again at this same time next week for another story of adventure and intrigue when we take you back to Cairo and the Cafe Tambourine run by Rocky Jordan. Just another reminder to all our CBS listeners, You and Education, a series of five talks, begins Monday and will be heard each night next week on your local Columbia station. Consult your newspaper for the broadcast time. You and Education brings you the views of a distinguished American, James Bryant Conant, president of Harvard University, in a discussion of the free public school system. Be sure to listen to CBS for You and Education. Rocky Jordan, starring Jack Moyles in the title role, is produced by Cliff Howell and directed tonight by Gordon T. Hughes. Original music was by Richard Arant and conducted by Ivan Dittmars. Tonight's story by Bernard Gerard was edited by Gomer Kuhl and Larry Roman. Larry Thor speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.
Cerebral Cinema hopes you have enjoyed this movie of the mind.